Let's look at demand and supply again. But this time, we are going to extend our understanding of the uh, math mathematical relationship between demand and supply. So as we always know, that uh, demand and supply is always have an equation. And most traditionally, we have been representing price as a function, either being a demand or being a supply. We've always been setting price as the main function and being some function of Q, the quantity. And to remind yourself, P, lowercase letter P always represent price, and Q should represent quantity of the commodity. And so demand can always be expressed as price is a function F of Q, and supply, as a reminder again, has always been the most traditionally been written as a function price equals a function G of Q. But so I'm going to start pointing out a couple examples where there are times we actually need to express the same idea of demand and supply. But there are times we can actually rewrite quantity as a function, some function f of pricing. And then the same thing with supply right here. We can also re-express the relationship between pricing and quantity as a function q for quantity as a function of pricing. And so I'm going to show you how we can extend our understanding and, and the, this, that skill there through my examples. I'm going to you know, bring it up shortly. So now let's look at my first example here. And I, call, I named that example one. So let's say there's a company that's called Discount Stereos. And so their most popular model has been found to have a monthly demand of 140 units, basically when the price is $930. However, when the price drops to 806.25, then the demand increases to 305. Assuming that the demand function is linear, think about the company, they have their own uh, research department, their own marketing department, and they found out that the demand here the two quantity P and Q pricing and uh, quantity is related through a linear relationship. The demand function is linear. Then this question simply is asking us to write the equation for the demand function. And let me also highlight this goal of our problem right here. Our goal of this problem is to write the equation for the demand function. And so now back to my uh, working board. Reading through the information, then we understand, a, we understand that this is the given information we have right here. When pricing is $930 per unit, then we can sell at quantity 140 quantity. And when price changes to 806, 25 cents. We can see that as a drop, or we can, if we're looking at from this is the beginning of the price, and then here is a drop, or but if you can also look at this as the beginning of price, then here we're increasing the price. Basically, we have a price change, and when price change to 806 right here, then quantity is 305. And so the question stated that, write the equation for the demand function. So demand is a function P as a function of Q. A good majority of, of time when we are looking at uh, coming up with uh, setting up the equation for demand or supply, here in this example, I'm only focusing on demand. but. Uh, Traditionally, we have been putting price as the main function and as a function f of q right here. And so let's give it a shot right here. So knowing that we have a linear relationship, this information is important. 
So having a linear relationship means uh, our function now, and, and of course, see, viewing this video, uh, you must have uh, viewing my other videos explaining about what a linear function is and a linear relationship is. But so that means my pricing here, my p quantity is some slope coefficient multiplied with quantity plus with some intercept or constant term. So basically a linear relationship between the two variable is like this, p equals uh, mq plus b over here. That's a linear relationship. And particularly, I'm writing this linear relationship according to that tradition. I, f I emphasize again, I'm writing this linear relationship according to that tradition where we're putting P, the pricing, as the function of Q. And so Q is the independent variable here. And so in that way, let's now find slope. Slope, just like the algebra has been the doing for us here, all we need is, I'm going to say the change in price, P2 minus P1 over Q2 minus Q1, our famous slope formula. And that here brings us into, so you can just simply treat 806, 0.25 as P2 minus 930 as our P1 divided by our Q2 is here, being 305 minus 140. So here I should go back to my given information and put some further details there. And so calculation will show negative 0.75. This is our slope. And then finding B, since we already knew that I can just simply take P2 being 806.25 and Q2 correspondingly being 305. I'm going to simply chose that pair of value and substitute that into my halfway completed equation. So my halfway completed equation at this point is P equals a negative 0.75 for slope times Q plus B. But then, now substituting this value, this pair of values here, P for P and Q for Q right here, then we're looking at 305 on the left. I mean 806. 0.25 on the left hand side to equal negative 0.75 times 305 substituted in for Q plus B. And now it's just a matter of solving for B right here. So the calculation solves for B comes come out being and allow me to put B on the right on the left hand side of the equation here. So my calculation shows 1,035 for B. So that means now concluding our equation here, then according to tradition, P as a, as, as a function, pricing as a function, equals to that function negative 0 0.75 Q plus 1,035. And so, let me emphasize again. We came up with this. We come to this equation of the linear demand function, but based on the tradition that we put price as the, the dependent variable and Q is the independent variable. Or in other words, price is the function and Q is the independent variable. But so what we just did there, writing price as a function, depending on the, the quantity Q. And I keep using that term, it's a tradition. It's a tradition. There's still a small percent of time where you need to write your same demand uh, relationship and based on the same given information. But demand can also be regarded, can be written sometimes depending on the, the situation that uh, we need, sometimes we need to write the demand as a function Q 
in terms of price here, meaning we treat quantity as the function or the dependent variable. Dependent variable and this P right here, in this case right here, would be the independent variable. But so, as I said, this is not uh, happening in too oftenly, but there are times that we, it's beneficial that we are able to write the demand equation as a function Q in terms of price. And as a matter of fact, I start seeing quite a few textbooks over in the market right here for teaching business math, and, and they, they actually start writing the, the, the demand as a, as a function Q, quantity as a function, in terms of uh, the, the pricing. And so, we are still in the same example here. Let's look over to my uh, example here on the computer screen, but see the line that I highlighted here, write the equation for the demand function. Really, the, right from the beginning, this question did not ask you to specifically go into which route. And, and the route I meant, uh, are we writing the, the equation as a function P in terms of Q or as a function Q in terms of P? And so this way of stating the question could be a little bit dangerous in a way that it opens two different doors for us to go. I already showed you in the earlier steps how we can write the same equation here, how we, we can write demand as a function P of uh, quantity. P is equals uh, F of Q that you've seen earlier. But now the, the, the extended understanding that I would like to show here is that the same equation for the demand here, how do, how do we write that as a as a function Q, treating quantity as a function, and then as a function of pricing. So let's give it a new start right here. And so, pretending that here is a fresh start right there, then we had for the demand here, now our goal is to treat quantity Q as the function, and being some function G of P. And, and P represent the price, and Q represent the quantity once again. And still, being a linear relationship, being a linear relationship means we're going to start out setting up our function as Q equals some slope. But this time, it's gonna, I, I'm not going to expect it the same slope as the earlier a problem even though it's a similar setup right here. So I'm going to have to use a different uh, letter right here to represent my slope. But it's still, uh, to stay with that tradition, I'm going to use a uh, capital M right here. So slope, capital M, times P, your independent variable, plus with some y-intercept. Uh, and here it's a capital B right here. And so slope in this case right here, since we're treating Q as the the dependent variable, the function variable, and P is being the independent variable, then the slope formula, it's a sim similar formula, but it's going to be careful a little bit that it's going to be this time Q2 minus Q1 over P2 minus P1. And so if we quickly uh, remind ourselves what we did in the, in, in the more traditional methods, then slope we found earlier was P2 minus P1 over Q2 minus Q1. But that was when we wanted to express P as a function of Q. But now we want to express Q as a function of P, then we're going to have to go, see this thing about this is changing Y over changing X right here. So P is acting in, in place of X variable and Q is acting in, in place of the Y variable. And so in that case, uh, my fraction is just simply upside down and, and backward compared to the earlier case right there. So now 305 subtract 140. And I'm dividing by 806.25 divided by, I mean, sub minus 930. So calculation shows uh, minus four third, or negative one point three three. I prefer if you could stay with fractions so that it can maintain a, a, a better precision. Like that. But in case that we have to uh, write it in decimals, or in case uh, that that anyone prefer writing in decimals, and, and normally round to two decimals is just good enough for us. 
So that's the two different ways of how we see the slope. So now that means uh, at this point our equation is halfway done. Q equals negative 1.33 times P plus B. So we have the remaining other uh, constant term, uh, that constant term to be found. And so now I am going to choose once again my P2 value is being 806.25 and my Q2 value is being 305. And so this time I'm going to substitute this pair of values into my halfway done equation Q for Q, P for P. And so in that way my equation becomes uh, 305 on the left hand side equals negative 1.33 and then the 806.25 plus B. And so provided that uh, you have seen some, some algebra work and, and be fluent with some the algebra steps right here then we can just simply solve for B from here by sub adding all that uh, quantity to the other side of to both sides of the equation. So consequently calculation turns out that my B value equals in two decimal one thousand three hundred and seventy seven point three one. And so now we are ready to conclude our equation. So Q equals negative one point thirty three P plus 1,377.31. So in the end, what did we learn throughout this example here? What we learned is we simply start out with this only given information here and being asked to write a, the equation of the, the demand, the linear equation of the demand. And so what we found here is the, the, the idea here is I'm trying to point out is that there are two options for us to write the, to write the demand as a, as a linear equation. So on one hand, according to the tradition, we can write the demand equation as P equals negative 0.75Q plus 1035. So that's on one hand we can do it like that, this is based on the, the tradition. And of course most of the time when students came out from a, a, an econ course here, this is the, the form of, this is the equation that um, most of them are the comfortable with. However, there are times there are problems where we need to write our equation of demand or supply in terms of as an equation Q but in terms of pricing. And so the same equation, the same information, same demand uh, equation, but we can rewrite it as a Q equals uh, negative 1.33P plus 1377.31. And so now I'm saying that uh, I'm seeing that mathematically these two equations are just equivalent version of each other. It's just different ways how we regarding each variable here. So on the left hand side we are regarding P, the variable P, the pricing as the dependent variable or being the function. And Q in that function is the, the independent variable that's responsible for different uh, pricing output. However on the right hand side right here the same two quantities but I'm regarding to Q as the main function, as the function, as the dependent variable and then P here as being the dependent as the independent variable I meant. And so we should be the open to both even though I agree again that a, a, a bigger majority is going with this route right here but we should be open to both because uh, you know as the, the world is, has becoming more larger and, and being more complicated then, then our problems will also the evolve and, and become the more challenging. So the more flexibility that you can understand with these concepts right here, then, then the more options it gives you to solve your problem and handle your problems, your analyzing problems out there. I need to make a special note here about this problem, this particular example before we are completely moving out of that. But uh, here in case 
the same problem here in case you already finished finished all the way to in case you already already finished all the way to expressing your p variable at, for pricing as a function of the q variable for quantity and you realize that we actually and you realize that you actually need to express your demand or your supply as a function q in terms of pricing p and so the point here is we don't want to waste all the effort and, and, and restart computing, recalculating, restart calculating the, that slope and the y-intercept. And so you can easily, if that case happened, you can just easily rearrange this equation here. And I actually had a, another video lesson showing how you can write the equation from one form to another a linear equation from one form to another and it should help into the skill of doing that here but so your effort here turning writing the equation p as an, a function of q over here is not a waste at all so right from that finished equation now you can just simply and how about allow me to rewrite it here p equals negative 0.75 q plus 10035 and so we can just simply subtracting 10035 for both sides and that brings up that leaves for us p minus 10035 on the left hand side and negative 0.75 q on the right hand side and then here we're just gonna divide both sides by negative 0.75 and so the work here if you have seen my other video lessons we actually what we're doing here is simply we solve for the variable q in terms of p and so allow me to switch my the equation around so that I'm more a little more everybody can be a little more comfortable by looking at the main variable to be on the left hand side so my q that we're solving for is now on the left hand side and the right hand side here is going to be and for now, just separating it out, uh, minus p over 0 0.75, and then plus whatever comes out from 10035 divided by 0 0.75. And so plus 1377.31 according to the calculation. And realize that uh, negative p over uh, 0 0.75 can be written as... Uh, negative 1.33 p plus 1377.31 then here we have finished re-expressing our demand function and like I said again if we're doing this for a supply problem it would be the same exact technique right here but we now have successfully turned our equation written in one way into a, a another way here I need to make a special note here about this problem, this particular example before we are completely moving out of that. But uh, here in case, the same problem here, in case you already finished, finished all the way to, in case you already, already finished all the way to expressing your P variable at, for pricing as a function of the Q variable for quantity. And you realize that we actually, and you realize that you actually need to express your demand or your supply as a function Q in terms of pricing P. And so the point here is we don't want to waste all that effort and, and, and restart computing, recalculating, restart calculating the, that slope and the y intercept. And so you can easily, if that case happened, you can just easily rearrange this equation here. And I actually had a, another video lesson showing how you can write the equation from one form to another, a, a linear equation from one form to another, and it should help into the skill of doing that here. But so your effort here, turning writing the equation p as an, a function of q over here is not a waste at all so right from that finished equation now you can just simply and how about allow me to rewrite it here p equals negative 0.75 q plus 10035 and so we can just simply subtracting 10035 from both sides and that brings up 
that leaves for us P minus 10.035 on the left hand side and negative 0.75 Q on the right hand side. And then here we're just going to divide both sides by negative 0.75 and so the work here if you have seen my other video lessons we actually what we're doing here is simply we solve for the variable Q in terms of heat. And so allow me to switch my the equation around so that I'm more a little more everybody can be a little more comfortable by looking at the main variable to be on the left hand side. So my Q that we're solving for is now on the left hand side and the right hand side here is going to be and for now just separating it out uh, minus P over 0 0.75 and then plus whatever comes out from 10035 divided by 0.75 and so plus 1377.31 according to the calculation and realize that uh, negative P over uh, 0.75 can be written as uh, negative 1.33 P plus 1377.31 then here we have finished re-expressing our demand function and like I said again if we're doing this for a supply problem it would be the same exact technique right here but we now have successfully turned our equation written in one way into a, a another way here And so this example two now I brought up here is entirely to clarify the idea that you have seen back in example one about uh, why you need to have that flexibility to be able to write your demand or supply equation from one form to another or you know from one way to another way. And so you can see obviously this example will still draw that same draw that same exact information from example one right here. We got this count stereo, uh, whatever that model is, and has been found to be in it having the exact uh, pair of values here. And so all that information from example one remains exactly the same. But the kind of ex uh, the kind of question being brought up here is going to be different. So, and we're still assuming that the demand function is linear. And so now allow me to bring up the, the actual question here. So our first question where I so call part A of the example is here. And so now this is the actual question I want to and notice I put in the, the request here is to write the function. So we want to write the function R of Q. So R of Q right here to represent the revenue as a function of quantity. So now so here we want to express a function of revenue. We start out from have knowing about demand, and now we want to step. Uh, we want to step forward and 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 set up your revenue function. But here you can see that the intention here it could be in your situation of of the business work out there that you need to express revenue as a function of of, of quantity to see how quantity will change will affect your revenue uh, outcome, and so. So now. Before we start getting any further into this particular, uh, to answer this particular question, you have to remember that uh, rules about revenue right here. But revenue, as being a business uh, leader or a business uh, person, you always need to know that revenue is a rule of thumb, price times quantity. The price we're selling each units multiplied with the quantity that you are able to sell. And so, hey, wait a minute, price in this problem of our, and quantity in this problem of our are the two variables uh, P times Q. So in other words, for short, right from start, you already knew that, you already know that uh, revenue equals uh, P times Q. And, uh, and so, and I should have just written that as R, Rev R here, short for revenue but as far as right now your revenue as the variable r equals two other variables multiplied together p times q and so now we we learn further that throughout example one and with the exact same information given here then we already learned that one way you can write the the demand function as p equals negative 
0.75 Q plus 1035. We also found from example 1 that we have a different way of writing that same demand equation, but we had a different way of writing that expressing Q as the function and, and P as the, 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 the independence variable. So in that case, we had Q equals negative 1.33 approximately times P plus 1377.31. So these two, I have to make clear that these two are the exact same equation, logically the same equation. It's just we use them for a different purpose here, but you had you already had that uh, the exact same demand but being written two different ways with it. And so now come back to our R here. Generally always uh, R equals uh, P times Q. And so remind yourself that back in the question part A here, we would like to express R as a function of Q. And so in this case right here, R already equals pricing times Q. And so we already had the variable Q here. The only matter that we are still a little bit got hung up here is that P variable is here being involved in the expression. But so now that's the entire advantage of having that expression that, e that demand supply expressed as a function P equals a negative 0.75 Q plus 10035. All we do now is to substitute that into our P variable here. So now, after substituting that uh, expression on the right-hand side of your demand equation into the variable P of your revenue function, then here's what it's going to look like. It is now revenue equals, uh, allow me to for now skip writing the, 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 the functional notation for now, but P can be substituted by negative point 75 Q plus 1035. And so now we can just do one more check here, but this entire expression now is entirely in terms of the Q variable. And so that's how we can legally say now that we have successfully turned our function, our revenue function as a function depending on the Q variable. And so just a little more step further that we can simply distribute that uh, common factor Q on the right hand side here and our function here combining like terms and all that would become point, negative point 0.75 Q squared plus point plus uh, 10035 Q. And so once again what we have arrived here is a simplified version of our function revenue but being written as a function of the Q variable. And so, same exact example, but now in question B, look at how the question is being changed. Now, we need to write the function revenue, but now R of P, function revenue now is a function in terms of the P variable to represent the revenue as a function of price. And so, once again, back to that famous reminder ever, we always need to know and nail down revenue it always equals price per quantity per unit multiply with the quantity being sold. And so revenue for short as a the capital or variable equals P times Q. But in this case, since we have that need to express R as a function of P, then in this case, once again, find out for yourself, currently R is equal to P times Q. So your variable P has already partly involved here, but we still got hung up just a little bit with that. Q expression right here. So what do we do with that? And that is the whole usefulness of how you can be flexibly to write your equation in terms of uh, two different ways here. But in this case right here, then this equation we have done that we have finished. Same demand problem. Again, I have to make clarification, but same demand, but we, we had it written in two different uh, forms of the equation. And so this time, the form that I wrote here, Q equals negative 1.33P plus the 1377.31 is the one that we can directly use and substitute that in here for, for Q. And so let's find out what it will do for us. So R here, the revenue equals, the variable P was there, of course, but now the substitution taking place, is taking place and now I'm going to have Q being substituted by negative 1.33 P plus 
1377.31 then I would like to go one step further by distributing out that uh, common factor P and simplifying the, the like terms and all that and so here we're looking at a final expression here being negative 1.33 P square plus 1377.31 P and now this expression on the right hand side is a function completely or entirely in terms of P and so now our revenue here is now a function of P or a P right here and that's how we have done another problem the exact same problem the exact same revenue but we expressing that in a different way as a function that now depends on how pricing can be determining the, the revenue and so in business, a lot of time quantity can, can be the factor that can, in, in some business, for some business, uh, quantity can be a, the factor that uh, affects the, uh, the different outcomes of revenue. In some other business, the pricing can be the factor that affects uh, the, the outcome of the revenue. So, like I said, the main goal of these two examples I would like to show is your ability, your flexibility to be able to write your demand or your supply that heavily relates between uh, price and quantity quantity and price be able to write and, and uh, flexibly between these two forms right here and those will transform be, will be uh, brought into your the revenue function or even your profits function for later kind of problems.